Hello and welcome back to the NFL DFS Slate Breakdown for Week 5 of the NFL season. We'll be breaking it down today. It looks like it's going to be a pretty fun slate. There's a lot of different ways to go. We finally have a slate where there's multiple games, you know, pushing that 50-point game total, which is spreading out ownership a little bit, making it a little interesting, and uh, we'll dig into it. Before we do, come join us at LionStar. Only $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do, all of it, all the sports, all the tools for DFS and Props AI, by far the best deal in DFS. If you don't want to jump to the $40 a month, we do have a couple options if you want to kind of test this out. There are those, there's those promo links right down there, right there. Click any of those on our pricing page and you can sign up to Chalkboard, Underdog, Sleeper, or Thrive if you're a new customer. Get one month free by depositing $10 or $25 if it is for Thrive. Great deal. Great way to check it out. And you can use Prop AI to help you pick those bets. Now, let's get into fun. Let's get into some football. What we're going to do today is it is a little bit of a different slate. So we're going to jump around a little bit more than we will. Go through a little bit of the stack tool go through some ownership and some match matchups. So it might be slightly longer of a show than uh, what we're used to, but we're going to try and get it done as quick as we can, as I know your time is valuable. All right. Now, let's uh, get into it. So one thing I do want to go over to start it off is we have a 10-game slate. So we finally have some buys. We have that London slate. So... Because of that, we have a couple less games, but it's a very interesting week. So, one of, or actually probably the fastest paced game of the week is the slowest one. Saints, or sorry, one of the lowest game totals. Saints versus Patriots. Likely to have the most plays run on the slate. At least it should, you know, project that way. So, with that, there is some interest in there. Now, it is, you know, the lowest score total. But with it being faster, I think it has the most outs of being able to go over its game total. Uh, the next quickest <laughs> is the slowest game of the slate, which is the Pittsburgh and Baltimore game. Now, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and Baltimore games typically are either low scoring or shootout phase. I don't think how either of these offenses are playing. We should really be looking shootout wise, but there could be pieces in that game that are fantasy relevant due to the pace. So at least it's not like a total cross out game. The next fastest is that KC Minnesota game. It's the highest game score on the week and obviously has a ton of interest for it. And lastly, uh, Houston versus Atlanta has some interest i i actually do kind of like this game like some pieces from it and we will be targeting it a little bit now as we are talking about you know the game scripts and different games to play we'll just go to the matchups tool now to start it off and the reason i want to do that is i want to go over some of the implied points the dolphins have the highest implied points followed by kc the Eagles, Detroit, and Minnesota. Uh, the one thing is the Detroit, I bet the line does fall throughout the day. Once again, Amon Ra St. Brown is missing practice with some abdomen injury. Uh, it's scary. If they don't have him, that passing attack gets, you know, a bit of a downgrade. But if that implied total does stay high and, you know, Vegas doesn't think too much of it, I could see people taking some shots there for very cheap, and then you could just fit studs around it. You know, you get your Miami, your KC studs and whatnot uh, around that cheap stack. So there is some interest there. Now, highest stack, highest owned stack for the day is the Chiefs. Looks like it's Mahomes, Kelsey, and Rishi Rice. 
which I think is a very interesting stack. It's not that expensive, has a nice ceiling, has a nice uh, projection, both ownership or both uh, Lion Star and consensus wise. I think there's a lot of things to like about that stack in particular. Arizona's next. You know, Cincinnati hasn't been good lately. They have been decent on defense, though, so I don't totally love that one. And then the Jets are here, which I find is very interesting, being this offense being high-owned. Look, we know <laughs> we know that Denver defense is awful, but same with that Jets offense. So I find it very hard to chase a Zach Wilson stack at this high of ownership. Next, we got Philly, Miami, KC, and Miami all filling out the board with our highest projected lineups being Minnesota, Philly, and Miami. I think all of these make a lot of sense. They are a little bit more expensive than, uh, say, the, some of the KC stacks, but the ceiling is there. The projection is there. So I am intrigued, to say the least, there. Uh, the highest value stacks. Now, this is going to change dramatically if there is some uh, Amon Ross St. Brown news, but da but Detroit is still popping up a little bit. Min Minnesota's popping up a little bit. I think there are definitely multiple ways you can go if you want to go a cheap stack or cheaper and then, you know, pay up elsewhere. Uh, all right, let's get into the full ownership stuff as the stack tool doesn't really tell us running back wise or give us a full picture of what's going on. Now, one of the things when we're pulling up DraftKings ownership that I want to point out right away, we have Wandell Robinson, who's cheap, high owned, Marquise Brown, cheap, high owned, Brees Hall, cheap, high owned, Zach Ertz, cheap, high owned. What I'm getting here is it looks like it's a studs and duds week. It looks like most people are going to build, be building their lineup with more of a studs, duds approach. What that means is going with more of a balanced lineup is going to get you different this week. Now, I love these weeks because I do feel like the balanced lineups more often than not are the ones that really get it done and have a high chance of success. It's just you're taking, you know, some shots at guys that do, say, three, four uh, games a year go for 30 plus instead of taking the shots on Tyreek or, you know, or Justin Jefferson that do it like eight, nine times. So that's really the difference here. But you're getting more guys that can do 30 plus than in a lineup, which stud duds where you're just hoping your stud or your dud guys low own value pieces are able to go for 20 plus. So I do like leaning in at least on DraftKings on more of a balanced approach. I think it's probably the sharp way to go. Uh, quarterback wise, Hertz and Tua look like the high owned as well as Mahomes. Then we drop off a bit. I think Kirk Cousins at only 10% is a little interesting. Uh, Jared Goff, super low owned is interesting. And, you know, we just really drop off a cliff ownership wise after that. Obviously, it is still uh, Friday morning. Ownership is going to change a ton from now until Sunday. So we're not going to lean on it quite as much as we normally would. But I do want to go over it. James Conner has been really good. He's looking high owned. Bijan Robinson in a great spot going high owned. Uh, Brees Hall. This one is interesting. I was hoping ownership would not be here, but everybody knows the news. He's no longer on a snap count. I still do not think he's going to be a 80% snap guy. He's still probably 60%-ish. Um hasn't quite got the work we'd like to see but we know the talent is there and he's obviously getting more healthy and denver has just got torched uh by the running back position so breeze is interesting at his price mixon is interesting but right now how this offense is running 
very hard for me to see a blow up game, but we do know his blow up games are possible. DeAndre Swift, all are interesting. We do need to touch on Devon A. Chain a little bit here. He's had two huge games in a row. The guy is obviously electric. He's in a good matchup. My one worry here is so most are still likely to start. And last week, Mostert only had, I think it was 35% of the snaps. A-Chain or A-Chan had like 60. Uh, I don't know if that's for real. I don't know if that is really the change that has happened. Uh, Mostert fumbled, made some mistakes, and then A-Chan just got more work because of that. Now, is that going to be the change they make all, you know, for the rest of the season? If so, I love A-Chan in this situation at a little low, lower ownership than he should be. But there is some risk there because it could be Mostert once again as, you know, getting more of the work. Now, A-Chan can hit home runs from anywhere on the field. He's obviously explosive. They obviously like him around the red zone as the fact that he has six touchdowns over the last two games and a ton of red zone attempts between targets and rushing. Now, there is going to be some touchdown regression with him. There's no way he can keep scoring at this rate. But he's going off right now. Henry, Pacheco, all of our interesting. I think Pacheco is a little bit interesting here as Mahomes, uh, Travis Kelsey are all kind of high-owned pieces. If you were to get Pacheco and, you know, he gets – one two rushing touchdowns then you're taking you're crushing all those Mahomes lineups because Pacheco is the one getting them and not Mahomes so I think there is some leverage going Pacheco and he, he is a little interesting Kamara we got to bring up he played a ton and had 14 targets his first week back could very well be <laughs> once again a big, big Kamara season, especially if those target numbers kind of keep going. So he is absolutely interesting. And then if we go down the board, one of the pieces I really need to talk about is Jamar Gibbs. Look, I know we've talked about him pretty much every week. My thinking here is if Amon Ra St. Brown is out, Jamar Gibbs may be targeted a little bit more. So he is a little bit more interesting as is you know say Josh Reynolds uh Khalif Raymond and Laporta but at very low ownership I do like Gibbs a little bit more and I don't think a ton of people will make that connection going to Gibbs once if Amon Ra is out but the guy is electric and they need to be getting him the ball a little bit more than they are he can do a lot with a little and we've seen games where he's had nine targets. So if he's getting that amount of targets, I would expect him to do fairly well. Um, Saquon is in an okay spot here. I think he could be back. Just uh, it's a wait and see type thing. But he is interesting if he is a go at low ownership. Uh, wide receiver wise... A lot of cheap guys up top, and then Jefferson, Tyreek. Those two are probably going to take a ton of the high-end uh, ownership. They are some of the only real, real studs on this slate. Uh, one thing we do need to talk about, uh, it looks like Cooper Cup could back, be back. And if that is the case, we don't know what Puka Nakua's role is going to be. He is still going to be involved, but he's probably not a guy – it is going to regularly see 10 plus targets with cup back cup is exceptional and uh, you gotta you gotta worry about him in that offense and how it affects everybody I think Tutu Atwell will have the biggest will be hurt the most from that but that's a wait and see we also don't know if cup is back if he's going to be a full go uh, Detroit definitely if Amon Ra is out has some very very interesting pieces for cheap and with Tyreek's high ownership, Waddle is a very interesting play. He hasn't yet had his breakout game this year. He likely will soon. 
He is a very good player, and this fits the more balanced approach because instead of going for $1,500 more, we're going to Waddle and then can spread some of that uh, salary out a little bit. So I think Waddle is very interesting. Drake London, this is a game we like. We know Drake London can do really well. He is cheap, and he gets targeted a ton when they're throwing the ball but we just don't know how much they'll be throwing the ball it's always an issue with that team but he is interesting at low ownership tight end spot is always you know absolutely crazy one Zach Ertz is getting a ton of ownership I hate it the reason I hate it is he can't do anything when he gets the ball if he does not catch the ball in the end zone he's not getting a touchdown he his a dot is low he could go you know six for 60 but like that's his upside uh he's he needs a lot of catches to get there and with that high ownership if he doesn't get a touchdown you know it's it's whatever i don't love going there kelsey's obviously in a good spot going high on though i think conklin's in a great spot absolutely love Sam Laporta especially if Amon Ra is out I do expect his ownership to go up a ton if he is out though uh other guys I think we can consider that are low price low owned Goddard looks good to me uh Hawkinson is in a great game that we really do like the issue with Hawkinson is he's another guy that is a dot isn't that low but he is an athletic freak and can break uh a play so I do like him as well uh, defensive wise you know it's an interesting spot you have the Titans that are ch super cheap going against a rookie quarterback so that is a little interesting but that secondary is terrible so I don't love it I think the Lions are are in a good spot going against a rookie you know higher ownership I think you could do the Ravens for sure uh, Pickett was injured last week. We don't know how mobile he's going to be. And if they can get a couple sacks, Pickett throws a pick or two. Could be a decent game for Ravens. They are a little expensive, though. Jets, I absolutely love. This defense is good. Uh, Denver Broncos have been a dumpster fire. And low-owned, relatively cheap, makes a lot of sense there. Saints, same thing with them. Patriots haven't been very good on offense, so there's interest there. Outside of that, I mean, defense as a whole is generally just a pretty hard thing to really pick at because the touchdowns are just so fluky. You know, the safe way is just to pick on low uh, implied totals and go with that uh, and you know, paying down at D a little bit. Let's flip over to the FanDuel ownership real quick here. FanDuel, we got Hertz and Tua and Mahomes. Same thing. Those are the high owned guys. And then a bunch of lower owned guys we can go after, like Jared Goff, Zach Wilson, Anthony Richardson. All of those guys are a little interesting. Uh, Tannehill and Richardson are both in very good throwing matchups. So both of that those guys do have some interest for me uh ownership very similar for running back on FanDuel as it is on DraftKings so a lot of similar uh ways we can go approach that way the one big difference I would say on FanDuel as DraftKings is it's not as much of a stud a dud approach it's just easier to fit in some of those higher price guys on FanDuel and you don't need to go as dud on uh, on FanDuel. But there are still some very cheap guys coming in. Calvin Austin's uh, probably way too high owned here. Uh, Zay Flowers in a very tough game with Beckham and Bateman likely coming back. Rondell Moore, you know, second third option on a poor passing uh, team probably a bit high owned there so i i don't really love the value options that are going high owned on DraftKings. 
tight end wise hawkinson much higher owned as well as laporta Ertz is still the highest owned guy but i think you got to have some interest in kelsey at only 11 percent, but he is very very expensive the dolphins are the highest owned d all right so now let's get into the matchup tools and go over that a little bit so as we talked about Tannehill was in a great throwing spot stafford jackson stroud even lawrence all had decent games versus this colts d that D is just struggling on the back end. So if Tannehill is forced to throw, it could be in a real good spot uh, for the likes of DeAndre Hopkins, Shiga Konwa, uh, and whatnot. So we know Zach Wilson's in a good spot. Tua lit him up. Fields lit him up. Howell had a good game. Jimmy G was meh. But uh, once again, you know, we can pick on Denver. The one thing I will say is Denver 100% will make some adjustments. Maybe they aren't so beatable on the back end once they do. Stafford's in a good spot. Got some weapons back with Cooper Cup or likely to get some weapons back. So there is some interest there. I just don't love it. I think you'd probably be better off going Hurts and using some run back uh, Rams pieces than going Stafford. Burrow, at this point, we just know he is not healthy. He can't move whatsoever, so I cannot endorse going to him. He is, however, stupid cheap for his ability. I just don't know if he's going to be able to get a ceiling game at this point. I would probably wait for another week or two for that calf to heal a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, just... Lamar's in a decent spot here. We know this game is a higher pace. The thing is that it is a divisional game. And what we always see with Lamar is he's just okay. You know, game totals, 19 to 20, 24, 28, 26, 23. You know, they are getting there. But what Lamar just hasn't crushed in any of these uh, Pittsburgh matchups, it's just a tough one. Those Ravens. Steelers games are always tough. Uh, nobody is going to be playing Daniel Jones. He is cheap. We know he has a big time ceiling. He's likely going to have to throw, likely going to have to run. So there is some intrigue here. Now, this offensive line has been awful, uh, but there is some ceiling here. I think there's at least some interest uh, due to the fact that he is such a good runner with the ball uh, at 5,800. Don't love it, though. Mahomes, obviously, in a good spot. Bryce Young is interesting. He's had some tough matchups. Now he's getting Detroit, which will be a little bit uh, easier. But against Atlanta, you know, he's been okay. Been okay. Don't love it. Unfortunately, Richardson's price is finally going up, but... He is very good, and he's actually been a little bit better throwing the ball than I would have thought, and they use him a ton rushing around the goal line, so those TDs are big helps. Tua Hurts can roll with them. Goff in kind of a rough spot here as far as what other quarterbacks have done versus Carolina, and he may be without Amon Ra, so I don't love it, but... The, chat, the stacks are going to be real cheap for him uh, this week if Amon Ra is out. It's the only reason I really have some interest there. Cousins, uh, teams have struggled versus KC throwing the ball, but they've played Goff, Lawrence, Fields, Wilson. And it was before Fields kind of broke out a little bit in this offense. Lawrence has looked bad. Goff is really the only guy uh that's a solid quarterback and zach wilson just looked really good versus kc so i think kc could be vulnerable it's just hasn't really shown yet they were a secondary that we love to pick on last year so i don't mind some cousins here at a little lower ownership rb wise Brees hall mixon pretty much all the higher owned guys are 
sticking out here. Mostert is here as the RB1, as he technically has been. However, did that shift last week or not is the big question. If it didn't, he is a little interesting. If it did, A-Chain's the guy there. Uh, Gus Edwards versus Pitt. Edwards just hasn't really done much, but uh, Pittsburgh has allowed some rushing yards. Looks like Melvin Gordon is out. Justice Hill is still battling with injuries. He's out. It is the Gus Edwards show, so the volume will be there for cheap. Gibbs, we talked about being interesting. You Also, David Montgomery is 100% in play. He is their goal line work. Jamal Williams crushed in this offense, and David Montgomery is better. So he's absolutely in play. DeAndre Swift is in play. So many different ways to go for running back uh, this week. Best matchups for wide receiver. We got KC uh, receivers, obviously the Tennessee guys. The one thing I will say, so Traylon Burks is popping here. He has missed practice all week. He was out last week. I would expect him to be out again if that's the case. DeAndre Hopkins is going to run the show, get a ton of targets in a good matchup. Wilson has a really good matchup. Zach Wilson just needs to get him the ball, and his price is down a bit since uh, he hasn't done too much to start the season. Uh, Pittman is in play. The one thing I will say with Pittman is that he is touchdown or bust. He It's hard for him to get over 100 yards just because his A dot is low, but he is interesting as is, say, Josh Downs or Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce hasn't done anything this year, but he's playing a ton and can get deep. If he can burn that secondary once for his cheap price, he's interesting. Uh, the Dolphins, you know, they've got beat by similar players as to Slayton, so he's at least interesting there. If you want to go with that Daniel Jones stack outside of that, I probably wouldn't be on Slayton and the poor matchup guys, Marquise Brown, who is high owned Jamar chase burrow, you know, is getting some ownership chase. Will too. the one thing I will say about Jamar chase T Higgins could be out. So if Jamar chase gets super high owned and super steamed ownership wise, Tyler Boyd might be in a very interesting spot there. Nico Collins in a decent spot, but our WR1s just haven't fared well versus Atlanta. I think you can go Tank, Dell, or Woods in this situation. Both of them are interesting. I think Thielen is interesting, even though he's in a tougher matchup. Tight end-wise, Okonwa, Ertz, Schultz all have the best matchups, but I don't love all of them, or I don't really love them. I don't like Ertz really at his, what his ownership is, uh, but he is a safe play. I think for cash, he makes a lot of sense. Konwa has some real upside because of his athletic ability, but he's a three, four target a game guy. So he's got to do a lot with a little Schultz just hasn't been used in this offense that much. So I don't love him. I think Conklin has some interest. Six targets last week, five, six, one week one. So Zach Wilson is using him. He's in a good matchup, not getting owned. It's interesting. Uh, Irv Smith, Hig Higby, I don't love with the addition of Cup if he plays. I think Andrews, Hawkinson, and Kels are all very interesting this week as kind of pay up options and just avoid this junk. The one thing I will say, Laporta is in a tough matchup. Nobody's really done well against that Car Carolina D at the tight end spot. Hawkinson was shut down. Fant was shut down. Johnson, Pitts, all shut down. But if Amon Ra is out, he's going to get some targets. And he's had at least five targets in every game with an 11 target game at Atlanta. Uh, so I think there's definite interest to Laporta. 
Goddard also is interesting, even though tight ends haven't done anything versus uh, the Rams. But with who they've played, I wouldn't really worry about that too much. So all in all, we got an extremely interesting week this week. A ton of different ways. I would say lean into some correlation this week and, you know, go with, make sure you're stacking your teams, gives you the best chance. Look at the perfect lineup data we have here for 10, uh, 10 slate or 10 game slates, you know, go off that, build some lineups with it. The one thing I will say with the perfect lineups is it, it that's the perfect lineup. You can add slightly more correlation than the perfect lineup is saying to try to get that winning combination. And that is likely the secret to this week with so many games and so many games that do have some interest. There's really not one game this week that I'm like, nope, not touching that one. Uh, so even though there is 10 games, every single game has at least one player that is interesting now if that one player gets there there's probably another one on on the other side that gets there as well so lean into some correlation give yourself the best chance to hit that ceiling play that you can and good luck to you all this week we will see you back on monday to win some more money and uh y'all have a good one Good luck. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a ton. Bye.